<laughs> yeah, man. Uh, quick order of business first, man. Sincerely, sincerely, sincerely. Uh, sending an abundance of prayers uh, and immediate healing um, during the morning process of all those affected, whether directly or indirectly, um, by the shooting uh, in Uvalde. Out in Texas, like Uvalde City and Uvalde, uh, Rob Elementary High School, uh, mass mass shooting, um, a numerous of young kids again elementary school, so a numerous amount of kids were uh, unfortunately killed in the mass shooting, as well as teachers, administrators, so on and so forth. More information is coming out. This literally happened maybe four or five hours ago as we were filming a podcast. So we're not sure uh, what are all the complete full details, but we do know we are unfortunately faced with a tragic incident in America today. So we just sincerely want to acknowledge that and again, send out an abundance of prayers. And, and over time, I know it's not something that may happen immediately, but just over time, believing in God to sincerely bring peace and healing uh, to all those again that uh, affected directly or indirectly. Uh, this kind of hits uh, a little close to home for me personally. Um, if you are in the Texas um, state, you would know that Uvalde is um, probably about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes outside of San Antonio. It's more so in the greater San Antonio area. Um, actually uh, sent a text to check on my my old supervisor at the time, who I had gotten really close with, um, you know, checking on him and his kids, you know, knowing that they kind of go to school around that area. So it, it definitely hits close to home. Um, but I, I, I do want to send my condolences to the families that did lose um, you know, their kids or their loved one today. But I also want to call to the stand and, and call to the court of not only public opinion, but um, real legislation uh, or real legislation rather to go forth in regards to, I wouldn't say um, gun regulation on a universal sense because I, I'm all for the Second Amendment rights, but I'm not for anybody having the accessibility to go get a firearm and do anything heinous and cowardice, you know, as this, you know, 18 year old man, you know, chose to do today. Um, so, you know, call your, call your, call your state sentence, man. Uh, hold some of our leaders within the community accountable. Um, you know, if you care about this type of stuff, you just don't want it to be a tweet or a post on your Instagram or Facebook and you want to try to make, you know, real change. And call your congressman, call your call your state senators, and, and let's try to hold some people accountable for some real reform in regards to regulations and not allowing any old Joe Blow uh, to be able to, you know, get a firearm because from, from what I'm hearing, you know, it was very easily accessible for this man and for somebody of his profile type, you know, it probably shouldn't have not, you know, been that accessible. So, you know. Like I said, condolences to the families, but you know, some some stuff got to change, man. I'm tired of making posts, and I'm, I'm tired of just talking. You know, I, I really want to see some things change. I actually want to take it a step further and say that we should outlaw guns altogether, just America, just don't cripple this brother, because the revolution is coming, and I'm not giving <laughs> up my guns for none of it. Because I'm sane and in my right mind, and I would never go do that in a school or to any other public setting, period. So um, I'm going to go ahead and outlaw you on this podcast and say, no, I don't want you stripping us of our Second Amendment right that the founding fathers constitutionally told me that are, you know, that's a part of the Bill of Rights. You know, those first 10 amendments, it's a Bill of Rights, man. I, I don't want you infringing on my rights, talking about. I can't have no gun just because this fool went and one bad apple shouldn't shouldn't have to spoil the bunch, but I do feel like it should be regulated way more than it way more than it is currently. This is all no the protection gun. you needed. You win some, you lose some. But you live. You live fighting for the day. 
Man, them days is over with. Man, nobody fighting no more. <laughs> man, Are you a man without no your gun? Go, 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 go ask that to the nigga who went and shot up the school, bro. Was he a, you, you and I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, we, I know, and, and I know we try to make light of it. That's our culture. That's, that's what we do as, as a people. And I'm talking about black people, not singling out any other race or, you know, beautiful ethnic group that is listening to the podcast. But, you know, that's what we do. It's a common defense mechanism to make light of our pain. You know, we do have to, you know, joke about it, but, you know, on a more serious note, um, I'm afraid that that's what is going to to be a result in the future. I'm not too sure if it's going to be the near future, but I do not actually support them taking away the Second Amendment right. I do support, however, it being regulated more than it is. Um, but to, to take it away and say that everybody can't have guns just because Literally, the schools don't even have the infrastructure to on take or even fight back in a case of an active shooter. I think there needs to be um, uh, implementation on a statewide superintendent level and a district level in regards to um, safety compliances and safety uh, regulations that need to be put in place in order, you know, for those things not to happen, whether that be uh, metal detectors at the door, um, having more uh, armed police um, actually in the school and and not having that be out of the budget, right? Because a lot of times schools come back that way, oh, we just don't have the budget to pay these officers because technically when they go and play security, you know, at a school, it's almost as though it's the same type of spirit in which, you know, when they technically supposed to be on the line of duty and you see a cop playing bouncer at a club. It's the same type of thing, right? One institution has the money to pay for it for four to five hours worth. One institution, which is more common and is ran during the day, sadly, they don't have the money for it. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and, you know, give your reasonings or backings as to why, you know, a, a nightclub would be more heavily funded and have a, the operating you know, power to hire security, you know, of an officer more than a school, but I digress there, but, man, man, it's, it, it's just sad, man. I, I think they do need, um, at the very least, at least, uh, you know, a couple more officers on deck and not just sitting at the job collecting the check, but actually on the front lines, scoping suspicious people, um, and not having the free reign to just walk into a school because as it stands, you can just, there's no, yeah, you have to go in and check in as a visitor, but if somebody really wanted to, just like it happened today, unfortunately, you could literally get a running start and literally walk in there and just sadly start shooting, shooting up the place. place. Yeah, and it's, yeah. And, and it's nothing in place to stop them, no metal detector, nobody at the doors. Um, enforcing the hey sign in let's check to see who you are what you are who, who what kid are you here for none of that man so um, if, if these superintendent schools they, they find all of these other ways to you know teach about um, the LGBTQ uh, things within school and I'm not bashing that community at all but I'm saying they're making an emphasis to to impute that within the schools let's make it an emphasis to save and protect these kids and let's make an emphasis on safety like we make an emphasis on trying to be so inclusive and teaching them about everything yeah let's yeah. teach them about safety yeah and i think talking about like safety and trying to prevent these measures from happening just off the top of my head i don't know what legislation would have to be put in place for people to like take it serious and act on it immediately uh just something in terms of just like creating like uh, a, a border around the school system to where like you can't even get to the front like the front entrance without going through like some heavy like security uh, like procedure airport. before you even get on like the actual school premises uh, or campus so I mean to see something like that uh, I know like you would I know there may be a stricter 
it may be stricter on the levels of like high school or whatever. And, and that's really just like at the bare minimum of like metal detectors. But I mean, if you want to find a way to get something in, you'll get it in. But yeah, like I said, doing something like that to like prevent somebody even being able to get close with that type of, you know, uh, weaponry. Oh, uh, it would be nice to see that be like a mandate around the country to prevent things like this from happening. Also wanted to add to the 18 year old who did this. Dude killed his own grandmother before he went up to the elementary school. Like, I don't know how many people may, you may know that now by the time you're listening to this, but you know, somebody gonna do that to the young grandma. Like, it ain't, it's, it's He it's ain't crazy. suited. He's not well enough in the head to even possess yeah. a gun, which is why I call for, you know, regulation on, you know, the applications on the process of obtaining a gun, because I know, especially here in Texas, Hey man, they just passed the open carry law literally not not even more than two years ago, man. So it's like, hey. Yeah, well, better... like we asked for this. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, you hear about this kind of thing. You hear about this kind of thing all over the country. And I felt like this is the first time that I I know of this is actually happening in a gun state. Like a heavy gun state obviously texas you know what i'm saying so uh i feel like it's gonna make a bigger impact i know it makes an impact on me i have you know a few children in school and when you hear that your heart drops as a parent you know because literally the, the statement came out the statement came out texas uh school shot and it, it my heart dropped i'm like what school like, what what <laughs> What's i'm thinking like what how school? close yeah. what school like, like, wait, like, I feel like there should be a, you know, a, a, a alarm going off in every school in Texas. Like, hey, guns are going off. This is the mind of a parent, to be honest with you. And of course, that'd be a little over the top. But, you know, that is the way my mind went. You know what I'm saying? You know, I usually see it on CNN or whatever. It's, you know, in different states all across the country. But to me, man, it hit harder because it's like we're supposed to be the gun toting state that has everything under control. And just like Sean Hart just said. You know, they had the open carry law, you know, not too long ago. And it's like, you know, it's one thing that shook me real bad. It's like, it makes me think, like, did this guy walk up in the open carry stance to a certain extent? You know what I'm saying? It makes you think, like, you know, the, the way the laws are right now, like, was it as easy as it seemed? You know what I'm saying? Like you said, no metal detectors and this and that. Like, I feel like we, like, it was kind of like one of those, we think it's not going to happen until it happens. And it's sad that people got to, got to, you know, lose their lives because of it. And it's like, it's so easy. Like, dude, like you're, you're asking people to have this open carry law or have these, these, these loose gun laws and you're expecting nothing to happen. You're not expecting at least one crazy person or a person that's, you know, not feeling themselves that day to be able to contain themselves. Like you got to be a little bit more stricter. You got to be a little more tighter. We get a little bit, you got to be a lot more tighter. I wouldn't say take your guns away, but I'll definitely say, you know, this is serious. You know, a gun this, is a is an object that can take a life in an instant. So it needs to be just, given all the attention it can. Yeah, just like 9-11 happened and they had immediate reform in regards to airport security. I think the same thing should have been done. And I think this should have been done a while ago. And personally, if not Columbine, then it should have happened right after the Virginia Tech. Did we not learn? Well, no, it did happen in Taliban. It did happen in Taliban. They start they start putting metal detectors in the more uh, ethnic schools. They start paying attention to those, and they start going right. lighter right. and because more it was, it was civilized in the, ethnic, in the, it was other in the ethnic schools. Right? Yeah, because that's where it was happening. It, 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 of course, but, it, but we know why of the metal detectors were placed there. But you know, that's, it's, come on, man, it's just like setting up a mouse trap. Um, you know, in a in a in a field full of mice, you know what I'm saying? Granted, you know, um, sad to say, the, the higher probability of a kid, you know, even mistakenly taking a gun to school is probably higher within these urban, more, you know, um, inward city schools. So it's like, you're not really facing a problem. I think it just needs to be reformed across the board in regards to school security. We need to have more active police officers that aren't just sitting ducks who in their car eating donuts, hitting on teachers and some of the students in some cases that I've seen. That's a whole nother conversation for another day, but actually have acting 
and active officers on duty patrolling and casing the campus so things like this don't happen, right? And, and, and it's just, at this point, we've seen it enough times to where it's no excuse to why, you know, there isn't any infrastructure or any laws or any mandates that are in place that would have some type of defense for the kids, man. It's like, we, we just we just got our babies out in the open, man. And it's, and it's sad, man. It's, it's sad. It I varies. Hate, it varies, to be honest. It varies, to be honest. Because my kids still happen to be in, a, in an area where I feel like <laughs> it's a little bit more, um, I guess you say safe to keep it more plain and simple. And it's like, I think about schools where I grew up. You know, I went to a high school where, like, there was no form of security, any angle. Only thing it had was a gate. You know, so they can tell you, like, all it was was a gate. There was no metal detectors. We're, we're in a poverty-stricken area, you know, where anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, it's, just, it's just one of the things where, like, you know, selective schools get it, you know, matter where, whether it's from him, who are there. But it's like, why isn't that more of an important issue in America? We, we, right, we, we don't want to actually have that issue. Why can't we have charities and fund, foundations, like, towards security of schools? I understand, you know, there's other things going on, but that should be a little bit more, like, emphasized, like, you know, rappers, entertainers, uh, people in our communities, period, public figures. Put your money It's got to be in the budget, you know, man. It's got to be in the budget. So that means if we got to have a uh, public round of funding for public school security so kids don't lose their lives over senseless nonsense like this, then we got to do it because it's I love at, at this Go ahead. I love sports just as much as the next man, but if we can spend such so much money towards the taxes towards that. Come on, dog. Schools for protection. Come on, help me out. 